Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Garden Gaming's Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I want to apologize for not having a video out yesterday, but if you guys watched that update video I did yesterday with Joe, I was out in Gainesville pretty much all day getting, like I said in the video, the lay of the land. Because as you guys probably know, I'm going to be going there in a month. Actually, it's about two weeks now. Man, time is flying by. But yeah, I just need to get the, you know, like I said, the lay of the land get to know the area so that's where i was at yesterday but i did get home in time to help joe with his new channel and all that so that's all you know i'm not going to be talking about that too much it's just i wanted you guys to know where that was or what was going on yesterday but in this episode of let's play the legend of zelda ocarina of time we're going to be going towards like the third area i guess you could say of the game as a kid because the first one was kind of like the earth place you know with the the Deku Tree, then we have the Fire Elemental Area with the Dodongo's Cavern, and now we're going towards the Water Elemental Area. First, you know, this is such a, just a leftover from my childhood, I guess. I always like to charge up my, you know, spin attack and just chop all the grass down at once. I don't know why I like to do that. But also, you might notice there's a new item right here. It looks like a little green bottle. Let's go ahead and pick it up. And it's a magic jar. Apparently, it's not a bottle, but what it does is really just refill your meter. Now, I don't really want to talk to the... You know, the owls. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my trick. And now since I've done the, you know, that trick right there. He won't be able to actually talk to us at all. So that's kind of cool. But apparently I can't take out bombs if I do that. I didn't know that. So forget it. I guess we're just going to have to talk to him. Woohoo! Looks like you've gotten bigger and stronger already, Kyle. Well, thank you. I'm glad you noticed. Just ahead lies Zora's domain. The Zoras serve Hyrule's royal family by protecting this water source. Their door will not open for anyone except those who have some connection with the royal family. Let them hear the melody of the royal family. <laughs> he reminds me of Goofy, like, you know, from the... What, Disney, I guess? I don't... What part... What is Disney... Or what is Goofy part of? That is Disney, right? I have no idea. Alright, so let's go ahead and blow this up. Obviously, you can't get in here unless you have the bombs. Or unless you use some sort of glitch. And before we continue, I actually have a uh, gold skull toll we can get out of this tree here. But now, I'm really wondering... I just... I guess Goofy is part of, like, the Disney thing. I just... I always associate him with... I don't know what I'm... I'm just going crazy, I guess. But there's also another kind of different facet of the game here. We can talk to this guy here. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? They aren't selling very well. How about 10 rupees for one piece? That doesn't sound too bad. Let's just buy all of his beans, you know, for 10 rupees a piece. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? How about 20 rupees for one piece? So the, he's just going to keep increasing the price. And we do kind of want to buy these, though, because I don't know. I don't think you can even buy the beans as a, an adult. And I, it wouldn't even be helpful because, like, I think I've mentioned this in the past. What you're supposed to do is really just plant the beans in certain areas like that. Like, right here, actually. And when you become an adult, you'll be able to, like, ride them up into the air and stuff like that. So they're really used for... You know, getting to areas that you wouldn't be able to get to normally without planting them as a kid first and then, you know, planting or riding them up as an adult. So let's go ahead and do that. There's one in, where was that one? It was in the Kokiri Forest, I believe, that I need to plant. There's one in Lake Hylia I need to plant next to the observatory. That one right there. Actually, I'm not sure if you even need to plant that. Whoops, I picked up the wrong thing. But yeah, so basically anytime you see some- Oh, there's one in the uh, graveyard that I need to plant, so before I, you know, transform into an adult, which will actually be pretty soon, I'll def- I'll need to go around and, you know, make sure I've planted all the beans that I need to plant. Now, what you're gonna want to do, and it just started- I think the sky opened up outside, it started raining really hard, hopefully that's not too, you know, on the recording or anything. But what you want to do is really take this cuckoo, because I always thought you had to have the boomerang to get that heart piece as a kid. But all you have to do is like hop with it right here and then throw it right when you get to the ledge and you'll grab onto it. And then it's just a simple jump over to this ledge right here. So you can actually get this before, you know, before Zora's uh, domain there. And another thing that I forgot to mention is in the Death Mountain Crater. If you guys remember when we went in there, I said basically, or the timer came up and then because we didn't have the Goron tunic on, we were going to basically burn up, I guess. That timer is based on how many hearts you have. So right now, we would have more time in there if we were to go in there again. And the only reason we'd want to really go in there right now is because there is actually a heart piece in there that we could have gotten. But I would prefer not to die in this Let's Play, if at all possible. So I would rather just wait until we have an unlimited timer as an adult. 
And you might also be wondering why I'm carrying this chicken all the way over here. And that is because, if we come up to this point right here, there's actually another heart piece we can get, which is just, like I said, another one that I thought you weren't going to be able to get until you have the boomerang, which is an item that we'll get later. Oh man, the chicken's good. I don't know where he went, but I can hear him. Anyway, I was going to show you guys, if you hurt the chicken too much, I'm not going to do it right now because, like I said, I don't want to die, but it's pretty funny. I'll have to show you that later. Here we have another map. I was going to say Mask of Truth. What are these? Gossip Stones. I was calling them Stones of Truth. If we plant a bomb, let's see how high this one will fly. Well, apparently it's going to hurt me first. So that was kind of a fail. We need to find one that's like way out in the middle of nowhere that we can watch it actually you know, go all the way up in the air. The two that I've shown you so far have been kind of letdowns. But before we continue there, we need to get out our ocarina. But I'm actually going, going to play the sun song because I want it to be, you know, nighttime. On the ladder right in front of me, there will be a gold skull tola that only appears at night. It should just appear. Yep, there. Look, it just grew out of nothing. And it's kind of handy because we have to go up this ladder anyway. And the token's actually going to be on the ladder. So, let's climb up the ladder. And there's going to be a little thing on the ground that we have to play. Guess what song we have to play. Yep, that's right. We have to play this song in every single area, it seems like. We had to play it in... Right in front of Darunia's door. We had to play it right here. I'm trying to think if there was any other places that we've had to play it so far. I can't really remember. But Link, I guess, harnesses his inner Moses. Parts the waters right there. Was that Moses? I don't know. Anyway, over here, if we look down... Oops. If we look down, you can see that there's a little hole down there. And you might be wondering where that goes, but if you... I can't remember what episode that was in. I think it was the first time I ever went in the Lost Woods. There's a place in the Lost Woods where you can swim down and go in a hole, and that's where you'll appear, right there. But here we have Zora's Domain. As is customary with my Let's Plays lately, I want you guys to listen to the music in this area, because it is really cool. It just seems so peaceful. I don't know how to put it. I don't know. I guess it is, you know, supposed to reflect the watery area. It's supposed to be relaxing, and I think it kind of works. What in the world is that thing? Can we talk to him? Oh, my dear sweet Princess Ruto. Where is she gone? I'm so worried. Well, if you'd give me more information, I'm sure I could help you. But since you're just gonna, you know, complain, there's not really anything I can do. The reason I came up here, really, though, was to light... I have to get the fire from that torch right there and come and light this torch. I'm not even sure when I light this torch, it'll play that jingle. I'm not sure what that actually does. It might open the shop. I'm not sure what it does, but... The reason I even did that is because I need the stick to last a little bit longer because there are some other torches that I need to light down here as well. And obviously rolling is faster than walking. And I'm surprised that rolling in the water doesn't actually- Oh no, I'm probably not going to have enough time now, am I? Well, we'll see. But anyway, I'm surprised rolling in the water doesn't, you know, put out the stick. Man, now I got to do it all over again. You really got to- you only have a certain amount of time. To light all of these torches there's two right there behind that waterfall there's one right here and there's one in front of the shop area and if you're a fan of woody's gamer tag you'll definitely know what behind the waterfall means i was trying to make a, a subtle jab at that joke but i wasn't at, on second thought i was like you know what i'm not sure how many of my subscribers are going to know what that means but anyway let's go ahead and try this again i always thought there were five torches but apparently there's only four one i mean there are five torches that you have to light but I'm pretty sure these four right here are the only ones that actually count for, you know, making a chest appear. Oh my lord. There we go, my goodness. Sometimes, like... It's not the fact that you have, like, so little time that you really need to, you know, hurry. It's just sometimes you can't even get the torch to light it when you want to. But the reason we did that is because we're going to... Obviously, we made the treasure chest up here, and what could be in a huge one like this? Piece of heart. I mean, it's just sometimes, like, when you get those huge treasure chests like that, it seems like it should be something big in there, you know, like another item or something like that. But over here, look at these fish. 
You might be wondering why I want you to look at these fish. Which are actually apparently strong enough to move me around. Did you guys see that? They were pushing me around. But, remember those fish. Now let's go in the shop right here. Fish on sale. Why in the world would I buy a fish from there when I could just go out there and buy a fish or, you know, catch my own fish? I don't get it. But also, you might want to kind of stock up on rupees. You don't need a whole lot. Oh, didn't I say in that one episode that I don't think there are Deku sticks and pots anywhere else in the game other than in, Dar uh, what was it, Darunia's room, I think? But anyway, you kind of want rupees because there's a mini game, Shocker, that we have to play again. Luckily, this one kind of pays for itself. And also, it's not nearly as hard as the bomb shoot bowling game. If you guys saw episode 12, I, or 11, or 10, I don't know, when I had to do the bomb shoot bowling minigame, that was a pain. This one, though, is the diving game for 20 rupees. Yeah, okay, so he's gonna throw out a whole bunch of rupees, and we have to dive to get them, pretty obvious. Luckily, obviously you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. To pay for the game itself, we have to get four of them. So this game is easy because, obviously, like I said, all you really gotta do is dive to get these things. Just get right over it and dive. Unlike the bomb shoot game, where no matter what you do, it seems like it will go anywhere it wants to. Now, if Link's diving pattern was random, that would be different and stupid, so I'm glad they didn't do that. But if they had given you maybe like 30 seconds to do this... Wow, that was... Faster than I thought, actually. But if they would given you a little less time to do that, I think it would have made it a little more fun because of the, you know, the rushing factor. Like, as it stands, I got that with how much time left? About 30 seconds. So it's not really that hard. And actually, you know, the more I think about it, maybe the better it is that they didn't make it a shorter amount of time. Because the item you get from this, actually, you have to get to beat the game. So maybe it's a good idea that they didn't. The bomb shoot bowling game, there's nothing in there that is really required, you know, to finish the game. So let's go ahead and talk to the Zora up here. What a graceful dive! Now, please take this. This is a scale of our kind. With this, you can dive much deeper under the water. As I, I was like, always wondering, what in the world is that? Obviously, he tells me it's a, it's a scale, but is it like a scale encased in some sort of water? I don't get what that exactly is supposed to be. Regardless, now we can dive for more than three seconds, which I think was the old timer. Yep, now we get six seconds, so now we can actually dive down here into this hole. Where could this take us? Well, we've never been here before, have we? I've only mentioned it 500 times, though. But now that we have that, we are able to dive deep enough to get this bottle down here. I was about to say, if I miss that, I swear. But, yep, we got an empty bottle. Wait a minute, there's something inside of it. Oh, yeah, okay. I was going to say, are they really going to try and pass that off as an empty bottle? When I can clearly see that there's a, a note in there, I think. It kind of reminds me, if you guys have ever heard that song, Message in a Bottle... Why would I want to dive literally like two feet right there? That makes no sense. But message in a bottle, I kind of like that song. Anyway, let's go ahead and read that message. And now we have three of the four bottles. I like how they give three of the four bottles are available as a kid. So let's go ahead and read the bottle or read the letter in the bottle. Huh? It looks like there is something already inside this bottle. It's a letter. Help me, I'm waiting for you inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. Rudo. P.S. Don't tell my father. Couple things. Pr uh, Lord Jabu Jabu is the most ridiculous name for a... It's not even a boss, really. I'll show you what it is probably in the next episode. But also, why would you not want to tell your father that you are trapped? And I don't know, that just whole situation is kind of weird. But here, let's go ahead and talk to this guy. I am Bonuru, the Scarecrow musical genius. I hear a song once and I never forget it, baby. Alright, I'm gonna test that out. Whoa, you have an ocarina. Hey, why don't you lay a tune on me with it, baby? Now you can play anything you want, so I'm just gonna play something easy to remember. I don't think you can play, like, the same thing over and over. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a little bit too easy to remember. Alright, apparently that's different enough to, uh, you know, to allow for that. But now that we've taught, that is actually the Scarecrow song. If we play it... That's the most pitiful song I've ever heard in my life. But you want to really make something that's easier to remember, because if you don't, you're probably... It's going to be easier for me. Like, I can make whatever I want, because I'm recording, obviously. But if you're playing for yourself, I'm not sure if there's any way 
you can go back and relearn or reteach, you know, the Scarecrow song. So you want to make it kind of easy to remember. Here we have the fishing, you know, pond or whatever. Yeah, fishing pond. But I'm not going to go in there right now. There's a whole lot of stuff in that area that I want to tell you guys about, including several glitches. So I don't want to do that right now, but I will definitely do that later. Now our course of action is to swim across this huge lake, all the way over to that thing. And, you know, I'm sitting here wondering how in the world the N64 could render this huge body of water like that. And I guess what I'm coming up with, what my theory is, you guys can tell me if I'm right or not if you're a little more knowledgeable. I'm guessing this is just a blue, solid, you know, surface with a texture on the top. And now it's thundering outside even harder, so... <laughs> But yeah, I think it's just like a big blue surface with a moving texture on the top. So if that's the case, that would actually make it a lot easier to render, I guess. Instead of actually having to render, you know, water. But now that we're over here, we do need to play the Sun Song again. And the effects of that is twofold because it'll actually make a fairy appear for whatever reason on this island. I've had full health, so it's not really that big of a deal. But also in nighttime, there's another gold skull toll that we can get over here. And now that we have done that, we, we're almost done with this episode, I think. If you look down there to the right, in the water, you can see some pillars. That is the entrance to the water temple, and I know how much everybody hates the water temple. So, I'm not going to be doing that for a long, long time. Now... These things right here are actually kind of pads that when you- There are some songs in the game that warp you to other places. And those pads are usually the places that you go when you play those warping songs. Oh my goodness, is that gonna be the out- He better not talk to me. That's what I thought! Now he's trying to keep his mouth closed. I'm not sure, I think he might, if you talk to him, I think he might take you back into town again. But I don't know if I've ever talked to him right there or not. There, obviously, we have another Gold Skeletola, but we can't get that one right now because we have no way of getting the token. Luckily, there is another one that we can get right here. So let's go ahead and take our bugs out. And this would actually be a good time to use our beans as well because there's supposedly something else on top of the observatory. Wow, yeah, we can go up there. I think, though... I think you can play the Scarecrow song as an adult and get up there, but I'm not entirely sure. And I just, that completely reminded me of, uh, if you guys know who the Spoonie Experiment is, we've talked about it a lot, you know, on the, the channel here. There was a part, I'm not gonna go into it, or I'll just link it in the description or something like that, but that phrase, I'm not entirely sure, reminded me of one of his Ultima reviews. So I think, guys, that's pretty much gonna do it for this episode. I mean, I got a lot done. I think I'm actually gonna have another episode out today where I get everything mopped up right before the next dungeon, and then tomorrow we're going to clean up, you know, the third dungeon. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.